Hello, this is Greg Brzezinski for Beard Brand. Yes, it's that time. Time for the Olympics. We've been waiting, actually, not only four years, we've been waiting five years because of that old pandemic to get to the Summer Olympics. And I actually look forward to it every year. I look forward to seeing sports that I typically don't watch, but suddenly take an interest in, as well as perennial sports that I do watch. And I also take an interest in what the American team is wearing in terms of fashion. Stay tuned as we talk about Olympic style and how you can have your own Olympic style. I want to talk to you about a little bit about the history of um, attire. It's actually called a uniform, the Olympic opening ceremony uniform. And just going back a century uh, to the present day, I'm just going to skip over some of those years because a lot of it is repetitious, and you're going to see why. Back in the 20s, it was very commonplace for uh, the teams to be wearing what is the quintessential American prep uniform. Navy uh, blazer, striped tie, white slacks, maybe adding a hat, as you see in the 1929 Olympics. And that was par for the course, not only for America, but for everyone. It seemed to be the summer uniform. And actually for a lot of people, wearing light colored pants and wearing a navy blazer still is a summer uniform, um, depending on where you live in America. Um, that style stayed with us. It stayed with us all through the 30s, 40s, 50s. Into the 60s, you still see people sporting the navy blazer and the white pants. It is the quintessential American summer, you know, attire. Into Tokyo, same thing, navy blazers, white pants. It's a classic, you know, and, but will it stay with us? You actually see by into the 70s, you see the influence of more of a pop culture effect. Um, you see, um, instead of the navy blazer, uh, American teams wearing red blazers with, uh, with uh, white pants. You're seeing the ladies here with their white skirts on, a little shorter, a little uh, mini for the 1970s at the, uh, the Munich Olympics. Um, I threw this one in here, not so much summer, but I want to show you the variety of what can happen at the Winter Olympics. Maybe we'll talk about Olympic style in the winter time, but I thought it was fascinating to see in Sarajevo uh, back in 1990, what is it? to see in Sarajevo back in 1984, um, wearing basically Midwestern Montana kind of inspired attire for the opening ceremonies. Uh, a little bit of a departure in the Winter Olympics. But back to the summer, you can actually see um, that you know, a lot of the red, white, and blue will continue. The 80s brought a change uh, to introducing athletic wear into the opening ceremonies of the Olympics. You see people wearing here a track suit and a light blue track suit. How 80s is that? Uh, from, the, from the hair, from the accessories, as well as the color in the track suits, very 80s. And it's something that you don't typically think about when you think about the Olympics. I think we have in our head that the Olympic style for the opening ceremonies looks pretty formal, doesn't it? Um, you can actually see in Barcelona, a little departure here, we're in khakis with the navy blazer uh, for the Summer Olympics down in Barcelona. You can see here at the Atlanta Games in 1996, they were actually held in America. And I actually read an article here that said, yes, here we are at the Atlanta Games. First uh, Games in America in a long time. And we choose to dress like Canadian Mounties. Look at that, Canadian Mounties at the Summer Olympics. Go figure. Um, moving into the 2000s, you can actually see you know, the stylized versions. Through the 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s even, um, blazers were cut pretty um, slim to the body, more of a traditional cut, pants pretty uh, traditionally cut. Uh, the 80s and the 90s and even into 2000, you can see the, uh, the decades style influence here from shoulder pads to wider pants, and that is shown here at the Sydney Games in, in 2000. In 2004, you saw the use again of athletic wear as part of the opening ceremonies. And here wearing shorts and uh, you know just uh, looking a little more sporty. You think sportsmen, but actually a lot of people think that Olympic athletes are not only sports people, they are ambassadors for our country. And so there's a, 
not so much a debate, but do they dress as sports people for this opening ceremony or do they dress as ambassadors? I guess I'm more in the ambassador camp, I guess. Here in the Beijing Olympics in 2008, uh, Ralph Lauren um, started designing the collections for the opening ceremonies as well as some of the uniforms that certain uh, people would be wearing, both Summer and Winter Olympics. And that's been an arrangement that has gone on now for some 12, uh, 13 years. Um, and we see a, a return to more classic attire for the opening ceremonies. Blazers, white pants, uh, we have a nod here uh, with, a, with a, an American newsboy cap. Um, and that look uh, uh, went well with both the men wearing, both the men wearing it as well as the, the women wearing it. And it was classic Ralph Lauren at the time back in 2008. Um, he continued designing um, into 2012. We had at the, um, the London Games, once again, the blazer, the white pants. This is like classic Ralph Lauren. Um, we had a beret in this case. Um, but uh, very jaunty style, very American looking, uh, even with beret on. Um, and made a big impact uh, when coming in and seeing the, the classic return to navy blazers and white uh, lowers. Um, that style would go on into 2016 and we see the navy blazer, the white pants, but loosening up a little bit with the uh, dropping of the shirt and the tie in favor of a red, white, and blue striped t-shirt. And uh, it's a reflection of how fashion was changing at the time, how things were getting more casual. Uh, up until that point, people would have been wearing a suit uh, to work. People would have been dressing up more for church. People might have been dressing up more for dinner. And you see a relaxing of style. And it's reflected here in the way uh, the American athletes are um, dressed for the uh, opening ceremonies with a t-shirt, still pants and the blazer, but a little more casual. And that brings us up to 2020, 2021. Uh, I love this actual uh, drawing by uh, the team at Ralph Lauren uh, showing um, people walking in. And you can see the addition of a mask uh, that will be worn uh, in the Olympic Village and at the opening ceremonies. But once again, classic um, Ralph Lauren. We have the blazer, we have the t-shirt uh, left over from the 2016 games, but we also have the continuation of a more casual trend in dressing. And what is more quintessentially American and what is more qu quintessentially American than wearing jeans? So our opening ceremony athletes are sporting jeans with sneakers, a blazer, and a t-shirt. And actually, it's a look that a lot of people would go to. You can throw in a blazer if you want to uh, dress up a look. Uh, you can take it off. But it's actually, I think, right on point with the way people dress for the most part. Wearing comfortable pants, wearing comfortable shirts, and then dressing it up a little bit by snapping on a blazer. You can see the accessories here with the uh, bandana around the neck and the red, white, and blue striped uh, tie around the waist. Actually, it's a belt. Um, but the red, white, and blue belt, a uh, little nod to the patriotism uh, by using the colors of the flag but for the most part, right on point in terms of the way fashion is uh, today in 2021. I'm gonna show you some looks here, and uh, this is how you can actually get your Olympic style. So going back to that classic 1920s look, uh, I'm pairing a navy blazer, white shirt, classic red, white, and blue tie with uh, white pants, and throwing on a boater uh, for, to get that classic 1920s, 1930s look. Taking off the hat, this is an outfit you would be seeing in the 1940s, 1950s, into the 1960s. Classic navy blazer, white shirt, white pants. And it seems to be um, the classic look for the Olympics by using those white pants with that navy blazer. Another way to get an Olympic look, um, you're seeing here I'm wearing a uh, track jacket. Uh, this actually is a Ralph Lauren track jacket and pairing it with a uh, t-shirt and uh, wearing a pair of uh, light color shorts with it. So uh, a little bit of that sportswear influence uh, that you saw on certain uh, Olympic uniforms uh, for the opening ceremonies. But something that you can do uh, if you want to pick up your red, white, and blue clothes. I don't know if you have a closet full of them, but I seem to have a lot of red, white, and blue clothes. And I seem to own a fair amount of Ralph Lauren Olympic wear. <laughs> don't know why. <laughs> and this particular shirt is from the um, official uh, Ralph Lauren collection from the 2016 Rio Olympics. So uh, that's kind of cool. Love this shirt. And uh, 
It's actually my 4th of July Memorial Day shirt without fail. How would you get the look of today? So in this look, I'm wearing that striped t-shirt with jeans. Uh, I put a tie around my uh, waist instead of a belt and wearing that navy jacket. And that's a way to get the current look that our uh, team members wore for the 2021 opening ceremonies. So um, you probably might have some red, white, and blue uh, clothes in your closet. So it's like mix or match. You can wear uh, your white jeans, you can wear denim, um, mixing it with uh, any kind of red, white, and blue shirt, throwing on a jean jacket. Um, the actual flag bearer for the Olympic team uh, for the USA is wearing a white um, classic uh, denim jacket, um, emblazoned obviously with the American logo, but uh, classic sportswear for America to wear that denim jacket and this time in a bleached white. I will actually be looking to see how many guys are sporting beards. Um, you don't see it so much in the summertime Olympics. Um, you do see it uh, within certain categories. You might see it in weight uh, lifting. You might see it in wrestling a little bit. Um, you tend not to see it so much in running. You don't see it in the kind of track and field events. It's much more associated with winter for a lot of people and where you do see a lot of beards. You see it in cross country. You see it in a lot of skiing events. Um, you see guys sporting beards in the wintertime. So I'm looking forward to the Winter Olympics uh, to seeing what guys will be wearing in terms of facial hair uh, designs and styles. Uh, we'll come back maybe in a few months and give a critique of the beards of the Winter Olympics. So until we meet again,